Batman the Animated Series, also known as BTS, is considered one of the greatest portrayal of the caped crusader ever put on television. And this is my tribute to one of the greatest animated series of all time. So hey guys, in this project breakdown, I'll walk you through how I make 2D and 3D to recreate the look and feel of BTAS with modern tools. Now this is not a step by step tutorial but more like an overall explanation. So with that said, let's begin. So I already had a rough idea lingering at the back of my head which I needed to get out on a canvas. So I fired up photoshop and started drawing the scene. As you can see I kept it really really rough. Again. This is just to put the idea out of my head onto a paper. This is not the final version, it's more like a starting point for this project. I envisioned the scene in a stylistic touch angle where a car, more like a hover car, coming around this dark deco style cityscape and zooming past by the camera. By the way, I recorded this last year but due to the hard disk failure I lost the files. Thank God to my friend who was able to recover it. So the recording you are watching right now is more than a year old. With the concept out now, the next step was to build the city and the car. So let's jump into Cinema 4D, my weapon of choice when it comes to 3D and see how it was done. So inside Cinema 4D I started modeling these simple box shaped buildings. I just dropped a cube, scaled it up differently, then started adding a few basic cuts. Extruding some parts and manipulating the points to get some interesting shapes. Once one building was done, I move into another with basically repeating the same steps to get a new building. And I tried to make all the buildings look different from each other as much as I could. Once I had a good amount of buildings, I dropped a plane object to act as our floor. I dropped in a camera and started seeing the scene through the camera's perspective. And that helped me to set up the buildings in a certain way. Once that was done, it was time to add the rest of the buildings to the right side. Again, same process, just duplicating and adjusting each one to make them look unique. Then I added these boxes beneath the buildings and they act as a pavement slash sidewalk to separate the buildings from the main road. After this, I just added another few buildings in the background and our entire cityscape is done. And now it was time for the car. Now you might ask why didn't you make the Batmobile? Actually that was the original plan but designing a Batmobile can be a quite daunting task. I really wanted to make the scene as fast as I could to see the final shot. So I stole the concept of this hover car from the Batman Beyond series, another great animated show. With that out of the way, again, I kept this car model as simple as I can. It's just a box with some extruded parts, that's it. I adjusted few of the points to make it resemblance a car, but in general it's just a glorified box. The next part was the texturing and for those who doesn't know what texturing is, it's basically a 2D representation of a 3D geometry and once you have that 2D representation, now you can draw over it and basically reapply this drawing over your 3D model. So I unwrapped the UV coordinates of the car, then went into Photoshop and started drawing over it. Again, it was really simple. I just added some colors, a front grille with some light details and finally some fake 2D reflections. And this was our final texture for the car. And once applied, this is how the final car looks. For animating the car, it was really simple. First, I drew a path and adjusted it till I was happy with it. 
Then I used the align to spline modifier to attach the car to our path. Now I can just animate this position property to move the car. Doing it in this way was quite helpful because at any point I can modify this path or spline and the car's position gonna get auto updated. I animated this property over time and also animated the car's rotation values, especially during the turn. And after playing for a while and adjusting all the parameters, this is my final car animation done. Now it was time to render our scene out. If we take a closer look at the art style of Batman the Animated Series, it's often described as dark deco. It's a fusion of film noir, art deco and stylized minimalism with a heavy use of shadow and atmosphere. If you guys want to know more about this style, you should check this video called The Visual Style of Batman, the animated series by this channel called Schizophrenic. I'll put a link in the description. So with that in mind, I dropped in an area light into our scene with the hard shadows enabled. I moved it around till I was happy with how the shadows were looking. Then I dropped in a point light to act as a fill light so it's not too dark. And after playing with them for a while, I got this. As for materials, I left them on their default state. I rendered three still images. The first one is this base diffuse with no shadows. Then this occlusion render, which will only render the contact shadows. And last, this shadow pass. This is just the shadows rendered by themselves. I also rendered this PNG image sequence of the car animation with the shadows. Now let's go to Photoshop and transform these into our dark deco cityscape. In Photoshop, I have dragged these three images. On the very bottom is the diffuse layer. Over that is the occlusion layer set to multiply. And over that is our shadow layer, which is also set to multiply with the opacity around 60%. Now there were some unwanted shadows on the back of the buildings. So I selected the shadow layer and masked those areas and fill them with white. Then I duplicated my diffuse layer and put it over the top of everything. I made a selection, then threw in a gradient ramp in which the bottom is lighter and the top part is more on the darker shade of blue. Also set the blending mode to multiply. I changed the color into even more darker shades. I threw in a black solid as a BG. Then in a new layer, I started making selection around the sides of the buildings. Once done, I added a different type of gradient over them to separate each structure. After this, I went to filter, noise, add noise, and for some reason it didn't got capture on the recording. I continuously changed the gradient colors and the amount of noise and trying different blending mode. I also got a huge feathered brush and erased the top of the gradient so the noise only gonna stay in the light parts. For the final version, I kept the layers blending mode to exclusion and the opacity around 80%. I repeated the same process for the back of the buildings too. After this, I started making these rectangular shapes and placing them all over the buildings to simulate windows. I started making a whole bunch of different shapes and pattern and scattered them along the buildings. It's just a lot of masking and positioning work. I decided to put both the noise layer over the light layers. This gives the light a bit more color variation. After this, I made some selection around the edges of the buildings and fill it with a light blue color. Then I took a big brush eraser and started slowly erasing the top parts. 
This creates this nice light edges around the buildings which make them even more defined. Now with our city done, let's work on the background smoke element for the car. I was experimenting with Krita that time, so I fired it up and imported our background city and the car render inside it. Now the line going through in the middle of the car is just a single frame of render of that car path. I just put it in there to guide our smoke around, nothing else. I started drawing the smoke frame one at a time. By the way, I'm not a traditional 2D animator, I'm an After Effects guy, so it was quite hard for me to do. But slowly, one frame at a time, I started drawing the smoke. I was constantly looking at references while I was drawing it, going forward and backward and checking on each of the frames. And slowly but surely, it was getting built. What you're seeing is hours of work shrunk into this clip. And after a while, the base smoke layer was done. After this, I added another layer and started shading the smoke again. This took me another good couple of hours, but the shading will give the smoke a sense of volume, so it was necessary. And after a long time, this is the final smoke element. I rendered these two smoke layers in PNG with transparency for our final composite. Now that we have all of our elements, let's go to After Effects and build out our final scene. So, in After Effects, I have imported all of our assets. I have this BG comp where all our Photoshop city layers are in. The first thing I did was added a gradient ramp effect and then adjusted its color and location till I was happy with it. After this, I created a shape layer and started drawing a city silhouette to put it in the background of our 3D cityscape to fill out the area. I had to duplicate it a bunch of time to fill the background up completely. Then I duplicated our light layer and added a bit of a Gaussian blur over it and then set the opacity around 30%. Also both of the light layers are set into screen mode. After this I made a new final composition and dragged in our BG comp inside it. Then I dragged in our car animation. I added a curve effect to the BG comp and darkened it a bit. After this I added a mask around the car layer and started animating it. And once done, I duplicated it and set the mask to subtract. This will basically separate the car and its shadow. I added a fill effect to the car shadow layer and sampled the color from our city shadow. Now all the shadows are kind of seamless and nothing gonna stick out. After this I added a tint effect to our BG comp and set it around 20%. I added a curve effect to the car layer and added a slight S curve to make it a bit more contrasting. But the background was still looking a bit too bright so for that I adjusted the curve some more and increased the tint to around 30%. After this, I dragged in both of our smoke elements and lined them up. Added a fill effect to the smoke shading layer and colored it proper gray. Then I added a glow effect to our car layer and turned all the values to a really low number just to add a bit of punch to the overall car, especially over the car glasses. Then it was time for my usual set of effects. I added an adjustment layer and added some slight Gaussian blur, then another adjustment layer with some slight noise. After this I added another adjustment layer, added some Gaussian blur around 15%, then changed the blending mode to screen, and also lowered down the opacity to around 20%. This will add an overall diffusion bloom effect to the overall piece. And finally, another adjustment layer with the posterized time effect set to 12 to get that final 2D animation look. 
And this is how I recreated a scene from my favorite animated show. In closing, I want to say if you decided to do something like this, break it down into smaller parts so it doesn't overwhelm you. I was really happy with the end results, but I would definitely change certain things if I ever make another piece like this in the future. If you decided to get the After Effects project file for this tutorial, you can collect it from my Gumroad page. One thing to note, if you get the project file, the zoom effect and the blur is not included, but you can easily recreate them once you got the files. I will also include the sound effects in the project files. Finally, if this breakdown inspired you, do consider leaving a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you all for watching and I'm gonna catch you again on the same bad channel. Bye guys.